Hey there, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Kit, Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with JumpstartYourMarketing.com. Uh, thought I was all ready for this this morning. Apparently, my tongue does not work. So, I wanted to talk today about troubleshooting conflict in your business. Um, I'm opening the floor for questions. If anybody has some questions, um, but a few of the things. The reason I prompt, I thought of this topic this week was because I had like three clients that I'm working with in my mastermind um, who are having issues with either uh, what they're doing with clients, they're not happy about some of the things that they're doing with clients, or the clients are complaining, or they're just troubleshooting either conflicts, challenges, objections, um, all kinds of different things. So this is a big thing. It happens for me too, of course, not that often, but every once in a while someone will have a challenge or um, need to talk about their uh, payments or things like that, or they they question your products and services or, or want a refund, okay? So these are the kind of things that sometimes really stump business owners and entrepreneurs and they don't know what to do. And a lot of time this kind of communication happens over email, which is not necessarily where you want to do this kind of communication, okay? So the number one thing I recommend is that you don't do this over email. So if somebody does come to you in your business, and says and emails you a question, a concern, a challenge, or whatever, I would encourage you to pick up the phone and give them a call and say, hey, it's Katrina. I heard that, or your email said that you had a concern. How can I help you? Let's jump on a phone call real quick. I have time to, this afternoon at 2, tomorrow at 11. What works for you? Let's have a call. Email me back and let me know, or tell me what time is best if you get the voicemail, because you'll get a voicemail a lot of times, right? So be very clear on the voicemail. On that you want to um, listen to their concerns and uh, have a conversation and then give some ideas of when you can do that, okay? And it's important to do that. Now, um, a couple things. Is anybody out there? Who's out there? Say hello. <laughs> uh, a couple things that are really important. I'm actually looking at my Facebook group too online to see if there was any questions because I posted uh, some questions. Not yet. Okay, good. Where are you guys at today? What are you guys doing? You're all sleeping. Uh, apparently, <laughs> oh, there I am. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to keep talking because I know there's going to be people listening to this later. And this is a huge thing. And and maybe you weren't attracted to the title of the, the live today and you think, oh, I don't need this, but I just need more clients. Well, but keeping the clients you have and retaining the clients is part of the job, right? It's part of the job. Now, there could be uh, ways, things in your business that uh, you need to troubleshoot. Troubleshooting conflict. It could be with a web designer, with um, a coach, a mentor. Uh, it could be with um, a team member. It could even be with a significant other or someone in your family. There's conflict or friction around supporting you in what you're doing in your business. So I would encourage you to investigate some of these things and see how you can um, communicate better. There's a couple tips I want to share uh, that I share with all the clients that have these kinds of issues. First is don't take things personal. Okay, I know this is really hard and it's easier for me, you know, I used to do door to door sales. I used to actually knock on doors at people's homes. Yes, I did selling oil change certificates. I used to say, oh, you want five, four oil changes for 20 bucks or five dollar oil changes, you know, before they could slam the door in my face. And uh, I learned how to really uh, not take things personal and take a lot of no's because I had to. I had to knock on a hundred doors to make my 10 sales every day, right? And that's just how it was. And so I learned really um, early on in my sales and marketing um, career to not take things so personally. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't come easy for everybody, especially if you've been in corporate all your life and, and, uh, you know, you've had things a certain way and it was always the corporate way and now you're on your own and people are telling you they don't like it or whatever or they're upset or whatever. You do, it's hard not to take it personally. I get that. But you can't. You can't take things personally. Always be thinking that 
99% um, of the time, it's going to be them, not you. Okay, it's going to be them, not you, and the situation that they're in. Now, I go deep with a lot of people. I, I may be a business and marketing coach, but a lot of times I have to talk to people about um, their families, their significant others, uh, their personal lives, the needs, their financials, um, all kinds of different really um, deep personal things. And if you're not doing that with clients and you just have more of a surface um, relationship with your clients, then you probably don't understand some of the um, challenges and things that they're going through, which could prompt them to want a refund or come back and say something negative, right? And so um, know that there's probably a lot going on in their lives right now that they just can't control. And there's um, not a lot you can do about it unless you can... Uh, reassure them that what you're doing with them is going to help them. But sometimes people just cannot see beyond their current situation. They can't. And it's unfortunate um, that they can't see beyond like a bigger picture. Like it's all going to work itself out in the end is what I always say. It's all going to work itself out in the end. And a lot of times people just don't see that and they don't or they don't believe it or they've had so many bad things happen that they just don't believe it's going to happen for them. And it's unfortunate. So I hope, um, so number one, don't take it personal. Number two, uh, we want to make sure you know how to communicate with these people when something happens. When something happens and someone is upset with you for your services or uh, maybe they disappear like a web designer disappears or your husband doesn't all of a sudden says, oh, I want you to cancel that because we can't afford it now. Or, um, uh, or a client says, I want to cancel or whatever. I mean, these are things that a lot of people don't talk about in coaching because we want you to stay in our programs forever, right? Or whatever. But it's the reality is it's still going to come up. Um, and how do you communicate? What are the words that you use? How do you finesse the situation so that you can uh, leave on a good note or uh, continue them in the program or save the sale, so to speak, right? Um, or let them out gracefully where it's still a win-win for both of you. Um, because you, you can't, you know, some things, anyways, there's a lot to know about how to finesse a situation. And honestly, I don't have a script for that. I, t I talk to people one on one about how to solve these issues and give them the words on what to say with their, with the person that they're dealing with. Uh, one-on-one, -on -one, it's all custom because every situation is different. So if you don't have a knack for that kind of communication, you're going to want someone in your corner to be able to share what to say um, in those situations. But remember to do it on the phone, not on email. And then the third thing about making sure that you um, handle clients, difficult clients or difficult situations, is to make sure you set yourself up uh, for success from the beginning. Okay, so sometimes like I have uh, a client right now who's a virtual assistant um, who we've been working with for a few months and getting her some new clients, which is great. But now we're realizing, oh, there's um, certain ways she's working with clients that she doesn't have an agreement ahead of time. Okay, so now we need to work on the agreement. We need to work on the what do you do before you get the client to make sure you're on the same page and this is how I work, this is what you want, this is expectations and boundaries and all this kind of stuff. And how to put that into either an agreement or have an initial phone call with people. Um, this is how I work and this is what to expect and this is what I promise you, etc. A lot of times people just dive in because they need the money and they say, okay, and then they start working, whether it's a coach or a mentor or whatever you're doing, but they don't. you don't think about the setting your yourself up for success um, agreements and um, contracts or at least having a phone call uh, first to make sure it's clear, right? I mean, graphic designers do this too and web designers, they just start working on a project and take your money, but they don't necessarily really um, communicate how they work, okay, sometimes. Not all the time, but it could be. So watch how you're setting yourself up um, initially with new clients, and that will prevent a lot of these problems from happening if you set it up the right way. So get some advice. Um, I'm happy to help you. In fact, I do have a two-hour masterclass I'm doing today. It's an open